Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another Looped In with Maritza. My name is Maritza Gertie. I am Good the Northeast everybody. Regional Organizer for the National Parents Union. Um, I missed you guys last week. Uh, I was away. Um, I had the privilege and the opportunity to be part of a, a convention, a very important convention um, in the state of Pennsylvania. It is the Pennsylvania Latino Convention, of which, for those that did not know, based on the latest census that was just taken, there are over one million Latinos in the state of Pennsylvania. So that is a huge amount of people. Um, the state of Pennsylvania has seen a, an eminent growth in the Latino population in people that have decided to uh, move to the state of Pennsylvania from other states across the country, uh, including Puerto Rico, people that have come to the state of Pennsylvania from other countries, uh, from other Latin American countries. So I really want to say a, a big thank you to the organizers of the Pennsylvania Latino Convention. I was able to connect and introduce the National Parents Union to a multitude of people. I was also uh, given the opportunity to go ahead and ask for a quick five minutes of which uh, the end result was my being able to show the National Parents Union video. I was also able to speak in both English and in Spanish to talk about the importance of parents being united in this uh, fight for educational justice and equality. So once again, uh, muchísimas gracias to the organizers of the Pennsylvania Latino Convention. Um, I hope that for year five in 2022, uh, we will continue to collaborate as well as maybe have it in the city of Philadelphia. Um, in, in continuing with honoring um, Hispanic Heritage Month, I'd like to let everyone know that in the city of Camden, uh, this coming Saturday, October 9th, in Venita Park, they will have a community celebration and that is at North 29th Street in the city of Camden from 12 to 4 this coming Saturday. So if you're looking for something to do with your family, it is totally free. There will be many activities, games, uh, information, uh, you know, somewhere to be, take the kids to hopefully it'll be nice weather. This will be happening this Saturday in Camden, New Jersey, in Venita Park. Philadelphia families, um, Effective today, the school year 2022-23, ooh, I spelled it wrong, school selection application is opening. So for anyone that is interested in looking for a school that resides in the city of Philadelphia that wants their child to attend a district school, the application process is now open effective today. Families, if you did not know, uh, please check for those of you that got one, Check your EBT and your pandemic EBT cards to see if the card has been uh, renewed, uh, if more food step funds have been made available to assist you and your families. Please make sure that you check that out for further information. Some more news regarding Philadelphia schools. Um, Philly Magnet Schools admissions are being overhauled. Now, the explanation for this is that the overhaul will be to allow more students that live in the underserved communities to be able to have admissions to the magnet schools across the city. Um, let's hope that this plan works and that the many, many brilliant children that have been denied access to many of the magnet schools across the city, get that opportunity to attend uh, without it mattering what part of the city that they live in. Um, this is something that is very um, near and dear to me. I don't think that any child 
should be denied the opportunity to attend a magnet school if they have what it takes to attend, where they live, what their family's income is, their nationality and ethnicity should not matter. Philadelphia families, please be a part of the selection process for the next school superintendent. For those of you that do not know, uh, Superintendent Height will be ending his tenure in the, with the Philadelphia School District the end of this school year. So now be, is beginning the process to select the next superintendent. I hope that parent involvement is allowed. I hope that they listen to the parents' concerns. I hope that parents are a part of that interview process, that vetting process, that selection process. I hope that families are involved and are a part of that. Um, personally, I truly hope that it ends up being a person from Philadelphia that understands Philadelphia, that understands the children of Philadelphia. I think uh, I, I wish him the best of luck in that selection process. Families, the National Parents Union has been launching several campaigns. Two months ago, they started the SBA campaign, which is the School Board Accountability campaign in which the executive branch of the National Parents Union has been traveling to several states, sitting in on school board meetings with families, listening to what the families are saying to school boards and observing and, 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 and just listening to see if, what, if parent and family concerns are being addressed if they are being taken seriously, if they are being respected. We just began a new campaign. This campaign is called the Epic Campaign. This is to hold school boards accountable for how they spend the funding for our children. And here is the link for, for our website. Please understand that it is very important that parents demand an explanation and transparency with regards to the over $100 billion, yes, billion, over $100 billion is being given to school districts across the country in federal funding, 122 billion to be exact as part of the American Relief Rescue Plan for grades kinder through, through 12th grade. It is school districts, it is schools, it is school leaders' responsibility to be transparent, but also to allow families to be a part of the decision-making process the decision-making process for our children. We are our children's best teachers. We deserve the right to be a part of the decision-making. We deserve the right to be at that table, to be a part of those meetings, to see what is going on. We all deserve this. I'm going to also uh, go over a few key points from the latest parent poll that was done by the National Parents Union. Less than half of the parents surveyed have heard of the funding that schools will receive. Less than half. When asked who should be involved in the decision making, parents said that they feel 61% should be teachers, 56% parents, 50% school districts, and 50% school principals. Parents want to be a part of the process to ensure that there is no more wasteful spending going on. Unfortunately, 
Only 21% of parents say that their child's school have even asked them for their input or their feedback on how the money should be used. And of that, families making less than $50,000 a year stated that only of that group, only 17% were asked. So what does this tell us? That unfortunately, if you are from a low income family and live in a low income neighborhood, and your child goes to a district, you know, a school that is in a low income area, they may not even consider you. Decisions will be made after the fact and you will be told where the money is going. How fair is that? Let's talk about that. How fair is it that just because of where you live, just because of your socioeconomic status, you will not have a voice because someone will be sitting in a school, in an office or in a school district office making decisions for you because they're not even giving you the respect of asking you your opinion. That's horrendous. We need to change that. Parents want the re-imaging of education. 57% of parents said that bold changes should be made. No more of the status quo. No more of the same things that have been going on year after year after year. Our children were home for almost two years, over a year and a half of a school year. Things need to be done differently now. Why? Because our children have fallen behind. Many of our children have fallen behind. So things need to be initiated. Things have to be done to help catch our children up. And it's going to take a combined effort of school, families, and community to make this happen. We all need to remember we are raising and educating our future caretakers, our future citizens. We have to do right by them. The priorities. Parents that answered the poll, seven, they said 79% of funding should go to computers and high speed internet access. 79% should go towards students with disabilities. 78% should be used for protective, for, for PPE, the face mask, the hand soap, the hand sanitizer. 78% of people that answered the survey said free lunch programs. Because if a child is hungry, they will not learn. They won't be thinking about learning. They're going to think about eating. 75% should be spent on more guidance counselors, social workers, and psychologists. Our children have experienced trauma. The fact that they were home throughout for more than an entire school year, not being able to be in school, not being able to sit face to face with a teacher, not being able to sit face to face with their schoolmates, has affected them. It really has affected them. And they need help readjusting. We really need to, need to make sure that everyone is helped. Teachers as well. Hey, Renee. Yeah, this plan has to go out to the masses. Go out to the masses. That's why I'm asking families. If you do not know where to get this information, because it is a lot of information, if you want to find one place to find all of these responses to all of these questions, go to the website, go to the National Parents Union website, and there you will see a detailed, very detailed breakdown of what parents are demanding. We are, you know, the Epic campaign is going to is going to focus on three things. And I'm going to tell you what these three things are. 
in one moment. Let me bring this up over here. My apologies. This is the website for the National Parents Union. We're going to be demanding transparency from federal, state, and local elected officials. Demand it. We're going to ensure that school boards and districts are authentically engaging families in the decision-making process at every turn. I don't need you just to say, oh, I had a, a, a meeting with families. Who? How many? Where are these families? Have these meetings at a time that parents can attend. Stop dictating to parents to accommodate your schedule, school leaders and school districts. Have meetings at an appropriate time for families. There are many working families, many families that have responsibilities. Not everyone has the opportunity to just leave their job in the middle of a day to go to a school board meeting or to attend the school board meeting. And I've said this before, have the meetings, give them options, give them several times. We have parents that work second and third shift jobs as well. Have several options, have virtual options during the evening and during the day, have in-person options during the day and in the afternoon. And hey, guess what? Even if it's once a month, have a meeting on a Saturday. If you know many of us, you know a couple the same time time you the same time you take on a Saturday to just sit around and have a cup of coffee, you can have a cup of coffee virtually with your families and engage with them. Ask them what their opinion is. Ask them what their needs are. Let them know. Let them know. We're going to need verification that the funding is spent on student-centered investments that are rooted in accessing and equity for children who need it the most. Children that need it the most. So if it's for your children in your school that have special needs, if it is children in your school that do not speak English, get them those ESL classes, them ESL classes, pay instructors that actually understand Spanish. Because believe it or not, children can learn in two languages. Don't make it harder for them. It's already hard enough for so many children across this country that do not speak a second language. But if you hire a person, if you see that there is a second language that is predominant in your child's school, this is for school leaders and school district. If your schools have a student population whose demographic, as far as language, is very high in a language other than English, well, guess what? Spend some of that money and hire teachers that speak that other language. I don't care if it's Spanish, Mandarin, Somali, it does not matter. Vietnamese, Korean, whatever other language within your school community that you know you have children whose families are coming from another country. And families are not understanding information, the children are understanding even less. The same thing goes for literacy. Not every adult is at, an, uh, is at the level of literacy that will allow them to be able to understand information that you send home. As well as be, on top of that, be able to help their child learn how to read if their literacy is very low. How about offer a program if you know literacy is low amongst your adults of your school children that attend your school, why not have a dual literacy program for families for, so that the child and the parent can improve their literacy together. How about doing that? Hey, Sharon. How about doing that? Now, we're going to touch upon this. Because this is still a very, very, very big issue across the country. Transportation. 
Transportation, transportation, transportation. Funds are being used to pay families to transport the children to and from school. How about this? What if you use some of this money invested in improving the programs at the neighborhood schools so that children can attend their neighborhood school that is within walking distance of their homes? If this happens, you will not have this issue with shortages in bus drivers and bus aids for transportation. I have a school that is literally three blocks from my home. I did not, I chose not to put my children there. Why? Because I don't trust what's going on in the school building. I don't trust that the children there are getting the education that they deserve. So in our home, we made a choice to put them in another school. A couple extra blocks away, we could walk there. But it's a, it's a, a steadily improving school. It is a school that I've seen that is striving to improve the education of all of their children. I've had enough of seeing families say that there are high school students graduating with a second and third grade reading level. That is absolutely outrageous. And it's not just literacy rates, math rates as well. There are teenagers working in fast food, working in retail, working at Walmart that cannot make change because they don't understand the basic concepts to be able to subtract and give a person back correct change. What does that tell you? They didn't learn it in school. They didn't learn it in school. They didn't learn how to make change in school. That's, that's horrible. Literacy rates and math rates need to be improved. So money should go math instruction and reading instruction. The science of reading, showing a child how to read. And if a family is having trouble showing their child at home how to read, the school with all these ESSER funds should make sure that they are reading programs at the school that help to supplement the children that need it. Because they all need it. All of our kids need an individualized learning plan. All of our kids do. All of our children, excuse me. All of our children need and deserve an individualized learning plan so that we can focus on what they need help with. Now, if your child has no issues, is at grade level for reading and math and comprehension, great. I applaud you as a parent and guardian. I applaud that school. But if there, but we know that there are schools out there that aren't that, that are not providing many success stories. We have to stop allowing these schools to push our children through without the tools that they need to succeed. And I mean even succeed in junior high school. I mean, even succeed and have a successful, what I call a high school career. Not every child will want to go to college, but we need to give them the tools while they are in school from K to 12, that's gonna help them logically make the choice of what they're gonna do with their future. Whether it's to go to a trade school, whether it's to go to college, whether it's to go into the military, they need to be prepared. It is very unfair to keep on pushing our children through and have them think that once they have that high school certificate, I'm good. I graduated high school. Then to find out that they need remedial classes to even get into college or their first courses in college will be remedial classes because they were not prepared unbeknownst to them while they were in high school. 
So let's try to, you know, meet, you know, nip that in the bud early. Help our children earlier, as early as possible. Provide the programs that are needed. Use these resources that have become available. Access to internet. Access to internet. Make it free and available across the school districts. Use some of that money. Negotiate something with these big, huge cable companies that are making millions of dollars to provide Wi-Fi access. Improve on the local broadband accessibility so that children won't have to worry if they're doing research, if they're doing homework, if they do end up having to be home, they can still learn. And as far as safety, all these millions of dollars coming down the pike, billions of dollars, 122 billion across the country. Schools should have immediate access to COVID tests if they have children in their school that are under the age of 12. And this is me speaking. Some of that money used to be used to be able to have a plethora of tests, also to pay those nurses so that every school can have a nurse, pay a certified nurse's assistant to help that nurse, use more than one agency to provide the testing for the adults in the building, to make sure everyone is safe. And I know not everyone will want to take the vaccine. I know this. Many people are arguing that, that they don't want to take the vaccine. Then don't take it. But at least make sure that the children and the adults that are not vaccinated, regardless of the reason, whether it's because they're too young or they choose not to take it, that they get tested weekly to keep everyone else safe. Face masks. I lie to you not. Children are going to school every day without a face mask. Not that their parents or guardians don't care. Is that they may not be able to afford it. So schools that had a stockpile of face masks are now facing the reality that they're running out. They're running out every week, every two weeks. Yes, they get some donations. Yes, their school districts provide them. But these are children that we're talking about that do not keep the same mask on all day, that, that tear them up, that dredge them with saliva from them licking on the mask, because I've seen it. You know, not every family has access to a washing machine to be able to wash the, you know, wash the cloth ones properly. Not every family, unfortunately, has enough to be able to wash things by hand. They don't have it. So if we see that and you want to make a donation, you want to donate something, donate a case of face of disposable children's size face masks to your local school. They'll appreciate it because they're going through them like it's just every day. I see it because every morning when I take my little ones to school, I see what's happening in one school. And if it's happening in one school, it's happening across this country at many, many schools that families, you know, they're at least hope. I'm, I mean, I'm thankful that they're sending their children to school. Send them. Because for many of them, being in school is where they're able to eat. Many of them being in school is where they're safest than, than being at home due to their home situation. It's very important that we all do our part. Very important that we all do our part with regards to our children. So this, you know, this watchdog campaign, it's gonna happen, it may come. I mean, they've already, National Parents Union has already gone to school district meetings. I've been come, going to the ones here in my city in Philadelphia. You know, parents had, you know, we visited Denver. National Parents Union has visited uh, Minneapolis. 
Uh, they just wrapped up uh, attending and speaking with families in Atlanta, Georgia. So don't be surprised if you see us coming to your city, if you see us coming to your school district meeting. We're there to support the families that need it, but we're also there to hold those school boards accountable and, and, and say, what are you doing? And question, what are you doing for the children in this district? What are you doing for them to make things better, to improve the quality of their education? Are you spending this money wisely? Are you making improvements in the infrastructures of your schools? Are you making it safe for the children to walk into the school buildings, for the teachers to walk into the school buildings, for them to breathe the air? Is the food edible in your school buildings? Is it edible? You know, ask, ask your school principals. I know quite a few that have done that, that, you know, um, uh, 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 someone that I'm good, I'm, I'm cool with, Ray Ankrum, he ha he's had a challenge where he has been challenging himself to eat the school lunch at his school, at one of his schools every day to see the quality of the food that the children are getting. That says a lot. Just like a, a, a school leader that has their own children or grandchildren attend the same school where they work. That's why I want my children. You know, for those that um, are blessed with the, uh, the, the ability to send their children to an affluent school, I'm not knocking what you're doing. But please do not think that because our, some of our children do not go to those, you know, affluent schools, those rich schools, those schools out in the burbs that are really nice. Please do not think that our children are also not brilliant and deserving of a quality education, of a clean school building, of good transportation, of quality food, of being safe, of feeling safe. Do not think that because you're in a higher income bracket that your yours are better than ours. And I mean ours. And I don't care what kind of school your children attend, whether it is a private school, a public school, a parochial school, a Christian school, a culturally, um, a culturally responsive school a school that is predominantly, you know, of a particular ethnicity or culture, it does not matter. All of our children deserve a quality education. They all do. All of them. It's very interesting when you sit down with a group of young people, and I'm talking about middle schoolers and high schoolers, the things that they say the things that they're observing, they're the ones that are telling the parents that their schools are unsafe as well. And then they're the teachers. The teachers that have for some reason have been used as the scapegoats. The some school leaders, some schools principals that have been used as the scapegoat and blamed for things that are out of their control. Because they can't say, they can only say but so much for fear of not being in solidarity with their unions if they have one. So for those, those educators, we're here to support you. Parents are here to support you. Um, I know it's been a hard 18 months or so. So it's, it's sad for me to see teachers that I think are absolutely amazing educators say to me, Ms. Gertie, this is my last year. I'm done. I'm leaving the profession. This is too much. And that's because there's a lack of resources. A teacher's focus should be on their students and educating their students. They shouldn't have to worry about the, the other things that other people are in place. Every school should have school counselor. Every school should have a social worker. Every school should have a school nurse. 
every school should have climate support staff. And for those who do not understand what climate support staff is, these are the individuals that help make sure everything's okay in the school cafeteria, in the schoolyard, um, in the morning at drop off, in the afternoon at dismissal time, but they're not being paid livable wages. And I've already said it in the past, not even school secretaries are being paid livable wages unless you work for a district, you know, an extended amount of years. No one should have to get a second job or get on assistance if they're working for a school district that has billions of dollars coming their way, millions of dollars coming their way. It's a fact. It is an absolute fact. So let's make sure that we hold districts accountable. Be part of the campaign. Let us know. Let us know when it's going to be the next school board meeting in your city, in your, in your school district. Let us know if some things are happening that should not be happening. If there's some wasteful spending going on. If they're not allowing you as a parent or guardian to speak. Because that's another one. If you're not even being allowed to speak, that's a problem. Now, I understand there have been some school board meetings where there have been some people that have been very unruly and there have been some safety concerns. For that reason, I understand that. That some, you know, some there have been some, you know, meetings moved from in person to virtual. This we understand for safety reasons. We want everybody to be safe. I don't want to show up at a meeting and, and have to worry about my, my safety. You know, folks that are elected to a school board, do your job. You were elected to do a job. Do your job. Those that have been appointed, do your job as well. We may not have voted for you, but you also have a responsibility to make the right choices. And I lie to you not. I've been a part of the last two to three district school meetings here in my district. I had been approached after every single time I gave testimony by someone on the school board. I've been approached. I've been asked, can we have a conversation? I've been asked for my contact information and I've gotten crickets back. I don't wanna name any names. I'm not gonna name any names yet. I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna embarrass anybody. But do not put yourself out there as, a, as, a, as an honest person, a person that is truly interested in what's going on in our school communities, and then not even, you know, reach back to me. Don't ask me for my card. Don't ask for a copy of my testimony. If you're not going to listen, I don't need a pat on the back from you. I need you to listen and act. And that is what this campaign will be about. We're going to be making sure that your school districts mean what they say and say what they mean and provide actionable work. Things that we can see are actually happening. Not a bunch of lip service. We're done with the lip service. Many of us have, have lost jobs. Many of us have, have had to take lower paying jobs. Many of us have gotten ill as a result of this virus. So, and many of us are tired, are absolutely tired. What's needed now is change, but the change can only happen when we all work together. We have to all work together. It's not going to happen if we do not all work together. Stop working in silos. Unite. United together, we will get more things done. And people ask me, you know, what has National Parents Union done? What have they done? What we have done is provided tools. What we have done is provided resources across the country. We have, during the, the height of the pandemic, families and organizations that were nonprofit got grants, free grants, 
And they weren't even asked to become members of the National Parents Union. They just had to fill out a form to indicate what they were, what they would, what would you do for a certain amount of money? What would you do in your community with regards to education? That is how many of the education pods were formed. That is how many of these nonprofit programs were supplemented with the grant for the National Parents Union that helped them to continue to safely educate the, our children when everyone was, 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 was locked out of the schools. That is why we've been asked to be at the table with the Secretary of Education, Miguel Cardona. That is why the Biden administration is listening and saying, hey, this group of parents is doing something. And it's not about making a lot of noise because I know a lot of parents that are not the kind of people that like to make noise, but they will support. Reach out to us. Reach out to us. The National Parents Union has now officially had now officially announced that they are going. We made an announcement a few days ago with our new delegates. We have brand new delegates. I'm so happy to know about our brand new delegates. Our brand new delegates, you know, they're, gonna, they're excited. They're ready to work. They're ready to put the time in. They're ready to do what's needed from across several states. And I'm so proud to know and say that we're going to keep on doing what we have to do. We're going to make sure that everyone has a voice. We're going to make sure that everyone has a seat. And if you want a seat, let us know. I want a seat. I want a seat at the table. Don't ask for the seat. Demand the seat. It doesn't matter if it's a school district meeting. It could be the city council meeting. It could be at the next meeting in your state capitol. Ask them what, you know, ask those legislators, what are you doing regarding education? What are you doing? What are you going to be doing? What is your view? What is your stance? Tell us what you're going to do. All of those things are absolutely needed and required. Your voice is needed. Make your elected officials accountable. Elections are coming up. Judge seat, judges' seats are coming up in several states. Governors are going to be elected. Are you registered to vote? Do you know who's running in your state for governor? Do you know their platform? Ask your family members if they're registered to vote. If you're unsure, National Parents Union website. There's a tab called Every Family Votes. That is a campaign making sure that all folks get information. It is broken down. Not, you know, in layman's terms, what a person needs to do, how they do it, what's going to be best for them, how to reach out to their legislators. Reach out to them. I want to give a special shout out to our folks that have been, you know, our newest regional delegates. Representing the Texas region is Jorge Martinez, the Midwest region, Tanya Drawn, the Southern region, Anna Shea Wright, Kristen White Kaiser, the Northeast region for New Jersey, Jamila Muhammad, Rashana Cosby, New York, Ashara Baker, Deborah Garrett, and in this state in Pennsylvania, Najima Robertson and, and, Renee, and Renee Brown from Philadelphia. I'm so looking forward to working with all of these, all of these people that have that are now parts of the National Parents Union family that are going to be delegates, they're going to be there for you. If you reach out to them, you will very soon have their email information. You'll be able to reach out, get information. You know, we'll come to you if you need us, but we need to hear from you. We need to hear from you. And in showing support of the National Parents Union, I had stated before, um, the shirts that we have been wearing, the shirts that say Latino children, Black children, our children deserve education, not incarceration. These shirts are very important. If you see these shirts, you know it's us. 
it's us. If it doesn't have our logo in the back, it's not a legitimate National Parents Union shirt. I can tell you that. And many people had asked, have been asking me as I've been out in out, I've been out in New York, New Jersey, and here in Pennsylvania, they've asked me, and they were like, Maritz, where can I get that shirt? So I would say, you know, go on a website. They finally uh, were able to, you know, do me the favor uh, of, of providing, providing a, you know, a custom ink link to allow people to purchase it. And now they're coming in children's sizes. So if you want your little ones to, to also represent as well for this great cause in support of this non, amazing nonprofit organization, there is the link in the chat. Feel free to make a purchase for yourself, for, for, for a loved one, for one of your children, for someone you think that would appreciate that shirt. Um, right now, the ones that are available are the Latino children. Um, but as I stated in a in a live post I did a few days ago, I'm quite sure that uh, if enough of these shirts are sold in honor of, of Hispanic Heritage Month, I'm quite sure they'll make arrangements to have the other shirts also available for purchase. It's for a great cause. It is to allow us to help us to keep on doing what we're doing, to be that, that representation of you, to be there for you, to be by beside you, to be behind you, to help support you, help keep you firm in your in your convictions regarding education. You know, we're at we're National Parents Union. I'm gonna read this here is the independent voice of American families. National Parents Union ensures the opinions, concerns, ideas, and priorities of parents are that, that parents are the decision makers to drive public policy regarding public education and related matters. We are going to be holding school boards accountable for how you spend this money. Again, I'm going to say it $122 billion. $122 billion. And this is not going to happen again. We don't know when these kinds of resources will be, will be coming to our schools again. It may not happen in our lifetime, in our children's lifetime, and maybe even our grandchildren's lifetime. We need to be take actions now to make sure that these funds are spent correctly with the right intentions, with the right planning, and with our input, our meaning parents and guardians. We have to make sure that this money is spent responsibly, not in a use it or lose it, mindset. We have to make sure that these school boards and school districts are focused on the needs of our children. You know, for me to hear as also as part of the uh, opinion polls, I want to add something here that while most of the activities had differing levels of support from parents with different political views, Republican and Democrat parents agree that funding should be used for individualized learning plans for each student and free breakfast and lunch programs. So it doesn't matter what political affiliation you are a part of. National Parents Union we're not politically affiliated with either, with any party. We're totally for, for, for bipartisanship. We want everyone to work together. We want everyone to make sure that all children get what they need. There was also something here that was added from these, these results. When parents were asked what would be most helpful for their children, again, individualized learning plans for each student. 
PPE, providing direct grants to parents of $500 per child for their educational needs. And of course, the computers and high-speed internet. Now I'm gonna say something about the computers. You get what you pay for. I don't know what kind of deals may have been made across school districts uh, regarding Chromebooks, but as a person that worked at a school district last year, I can honestly say uh, the Chromebooks were okay, but they were only okay if um, they were taken care of. If, if they were left in the hands of children that didn't understand that they had to take care of it, that they had to keep it, you know, as clean as possible, that they shouldn't eat or drink anything in front of it, um, that they shouldn't over charge the Chromebook by keeping it plugged in for days at a time. Um, those are the ones that, you know, had issues. And then, I'll t and th you know, not even including the, the internet access. School districts did what they could with, re with regards to providing hotspot, but hotspots could not effectively provide high-speed internet service for an entire family of children. So you're looking at any families that had more than two children in their home, um, did, their children, all their children in the home were not connected or they had to wait for different times if possible. Um, every home did not have uh, the resources to keep their lights on. So, there are a lot of things that were happening that were brought to, brought to, brought to, to, to head. A lot of things came to light regarding a lot of family situations, a lot of situa a lot of different types of home life. But I want to highlight again that we are all in this together. That it is all of us, not just one of us. Um, and I will be having discussions in the future, in the next few shows with educators, educators that feel that they may have, they may not be um, respected in their profession, educators that may that feel that they may not have received the at the the required and necessary training to deal with what's going on, and educators that are burnt out as well as the need for more educators. What examples are we giving our future educators if they're now seeing that the current educators are being burnt out or not being paid enough to have a livable wage, um, not feeling safe in a school building? What kind of examples is that setting up for anyone, any young person that says, I want to go to college to become a certified teacher? And then also something that I posted yesterday, what's being done for all of those people, all of those young people that are fighting to get their teacher certifications, but because they may have not been born in this country and not have a social security number but want to be teachers. They can't do it because of the red tape. They're being denied through no fault of their own because they weren't born in this country because they may not have been here legally. They were brought into this country by their parents for a better life, went through you know, K to 12 education are in college now trying to get their teacher certification and it's being denied because of their status. And there's a whole, that's a huge demographic of, of, of a huge part of the population where there are young people that want to teach, black and brown teachers that want to teach, but because of their status in this country, they're being told, no, you cannot be certified as a teacher and they want to teach. And we're going through a teacher shortage. So it's it's a lot of things going on. I know I talked a lot today. I appreciate those of you that have tuned in. 
that have, you know, given me some responses. Um, I wish I would have had some more questions from folks that I would be happy to answer. If you need to reach me, my email is here, maritz at npunion.org. Joining the National Parents Union is free, whether you are an individual, whether you are an organization, www.nationalparentsunion.org. Here it is coming across your screen. Um, I hope that everyone stays safe. We are still in an era of a pandemic. We still need to take precautions. We still need to be careful. We still need to wear a mask when you're in certain places. Um, very soon, the vaccine will be made available for children. So parents and guardians will then have to make a decision as to whether or not they want their child or their children to be vaccinated if they're under the age of 12. Um, women that are expecting, women that are pregnant are seen to be the highest rate of, of, of patients, unfortunately, getting COVID um, and really going through it with, the, with this disease because they did not get vaccinated. So, you know, it's a personal choice. It is absolutely a personal choice. Just stay safe. Uh, keep your family members safe. Keep the people around you safe. Uh, be nice to each other. Be nice to your teachers. <laughs> be nice to your school principals as well, your school nurses, your school counselors that are there, that are the social workers, the, the, the custodial staff. You know, be, be the disciplinary deans, the climate support staff, whoever is there, they are now doing the work of two and three people because they are so short staffed right now. Um, just give them some grace as well. And like I said, once again, if you want to make any kind of donation, get a pack of disposable masks for children and adults. And, and you know, Leave it in the front of the school. Give it to the, the you know, whoever's in the front, whoever's at the door, whether it's the school resource officer, a dean, if they let you go into the main office, just say, I want to make a donation of some face masks because I know it's hard trying to keep up with all these children and making sure that everybody's safe and they're keeping their faces covered. Just do that for me. As well as, hey, click on the link and buy a shirt. It'd be great. I mean, people spend money on so many things that they never use or that they rarely use. But getting one of these shirts will be for a good cause. Um, and I hope you, you, you're supportive of it. And on a personal note, for those of you that I have supported in all of your fundraising efforts, just do me a solid. And I'll thank you for that. Um, everyone, please have a very good rest of your week. Have a very good rest of your afternoon. Uh, this is Maritza Gerdy from the National Parents Union, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.